Well, it's the summertime and the weather is fine, but it's all business out here in Cannes. We are sitting right now with Tim Mapes, who is the CMO and Chief Communications Officer as well at Delta Airlines. Tim, great to have you here with us today. Thank you very much. It's great to be with you guys. And what a, it, you, hard to say this is work. Tough assignment, sure. Tim, right? <laughs> yeah, tough duty. Tough really, duty. Really difficult. The uh, the breeze was kicking up a second ago, so yeah. that was really bad. The hardest part. But now, now that we think about the juncture that this conversation, this festival is taking place at, critical time for marketing. There's so many questions around marketing budgets, AI, and if we start there on AI particularly, there's a question about how many jobs AI is going to take in the future. Marketing budgets have already been slashed, uh, restructuring has already taken place as well. How many realistically jobs do you think AI could take in the marketing field? Well, you know, I think when you look at screenwriters right now, you wouldn't think creative endeavors necessarily would be under siege to a thing like AI, and yet it is. Um, certainly things like bill processing and some basic things, some perhaps uh, HR transactions and things would be the first to go. I think there's pretty good headlines around telemarketing. Thankfully, we're not in the telemarketing business. But there's really, it's yet to be determined. And I think the way we view it is more augmenting the staff that we've got. If you're a customer care person or a reservation sales, agent, the ability to have the speed with which that information comes to you to better serve a customer frees you up to be more carefully listening to what might be going on emotionally with a customer. And the other thing that people aren't talking about is customer's use of AI as it pertains to interacting with businesses. In fact, the head of Google, when they led with AI, the example they used was a person writing to an airline seeking a refund and showing how AI could help create something. So it's not just our use in AI and threatening jobs within an industry. Uh, it's actually how we're all going to interact with AI as a technology with, uh, with customers as well, using it to interact with us. And so that's where my brain went next, because it's all about a customer experience at the end of the day. And, and marketing is one side of it, but where the customer experience really benefits or also gets hindered by AI is, I think about my own experience. If I'm sitting there and talking to a bot previously or some form of artificial intelligence, how does that better the solution that I'm getting at the end of the day, too? And so where do you see that being infused into the operational side yeah. of Delta? I, I think if you, you'd find it fascinating to know that to become a reservation specialist at Delta takes 16 weeks of training. Some of that training is dealing with all the complexity of a, a perhaps a, a complicated, what's called a PNR, passenger name record of reservation. And so whether it's flight information and all of that that somebody's got to gather, to the extent that that would push to your screen and that frees you up as that agent interacting with a person, to actually be empathetically dealing with the non-rational, the non-factual things that you're beginning there to say, okay, I see that. How might we best help you? Uh, to us, it's augmenting as opposed to replacing, and it's accelerating so that it reduces the amount of time a transaction or a, uh, a, an issue may, may take to resolve. It's been an interesting time uh, post-pandemic, Tim, uh, within the airline industry. Pilot shortage, uh, stories of, of baggages uh, being lost, how do you get over that, that consumer anger from a marketing standpoint? How do you go out and market to people that already are very agitated by the airlines? Yeah, I think you focus on doing the basics brilliantly. Uh, you have to be safe, you have to be on time, you have to be clean, you have to be reliable, but you also have to be warm and caring and, and elevated in terms of the way you're interacting with customers. And you know, our experience isn't that vitriolic hatred, it's quite the opposite. The number of letters and the comments that we receive around thank you for, and it comes down to really in our case, the Herculean efforts of frontline Delta people doing things in a moment. Sometimes our net promoter scores go higher when something's gone wrong because a person asserts themselves into a situation and addresses a customer issue in a way that they might not have expected. So even in problem areas, there's an opportunity to demonstrate as a culture and as a service brand, your willingness and your ability to do more for customers. And so we don't see, of course, we get. I think we get a million complaints a year. Every single one of those is a gift because every one of those is an opportunity for us to be better at something that frustrated someone along the way. But we get far more letters of compliment and far more letters that go into Ed's inbox every week that we just use to repurpose the stories internally to say thank you, frontline employees, for doing the things you do that are just heroic. They're, they're magic. Uh, and it's just incredible to see on a daily basis. And we're very much living still, Tim, I think, in a sluggish economy. Many would agree. Um, 
How is your ad budget or your marketing budget for the second half of this year? Strong. Uh, you know, it's funny because the recession that is hitting many now was us two, three years ago, right, with COVID. What we're seeing right now is, I think Ed calls it revenge spending in, in travel. There's $300 billion of money coming back into travel because it's always historically tracked GDP, no matter what, even after 9-11 and things. So it, it cycles back. And we believe there's $300 billion of travel yet to be spent on travel. And if you look at right now, we're sitting here in beautiful Con France, we have 620 flights transatlantically a week, and that's not enough, right? There are, our plane coming over yesterday was just completely packed and, and sold out. So there is uh, this kind of unrelenting demand for experiences because people already bu- fixed up their house or fixed up their yard, and they did that a year or two ago. Now it's like the realization that we're all actually mortal, and boy, what, a, what an opportunity to come visit places like where we are right now. This year, believe it or not, Tim is almost over, and we're thinking about <laughs> we're thinking about 2024, especially with guys in your position. We're going into election season. You know, are you concerned about putting marketing dollars to work in an environment that might be as polarizing as the last election? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's, it would be naive to think that 24 is not going to be the most divisive, kind of vitriolic narrative that we've seen. But I always think that the beautiful thing about communication and what we do as marketing is the answer to all of that is more communication, right? Getting out and sharing what is it that you believe in, what do you stand for, and let the chips fall where they may. But you've got to be true to yourself. I think some of the instances we've seen recently are people who go out with one thing and then backtrack and flip and flop, and then they frankly alienate both sides. It's much easier to be really clear what you stand for, and that to the extent others aren't for that, that's just going to have to be okay, because strategy is as much what you're not going to do as what you are going to do or be. Tim, thanks so much for taking the time here today. We appreciate the conversation. Brad, Brian, it's great to be with you both. Thank you for having us. Thanks so much, Tim.